And here we go. I know you guys were crushing it on uh, on words on stream, as always, as you always do. But hello, welcome. Thanks so much for being here. I appreciate you guys. Welcome to another episode of the Razcast, where we have it once in a while, and I always, <laughs> I always forget when we're having it because uh, we always get busy. But thank you so much for being here. My name is Raz Bora, and I got my buddy here, Fresh Baked Goods. Hello. And today we are interviewing our actual good friend and producer of Hell Loose, Mr. Craig. Craig, welcome. Hey, thank you for having me, mate. Ooh. So uh, it's been a long time since we've interviewed anyone associated with Hell Loose, aside from Soul Sniper. <laughs> That's He's not a... a uh, associated with that in that way he doesn't count yeah but uh thank you so much for being here i know obviously like there's a lot of questions people have um so i think it's really important to kind of get us started with who you are and what you do um so we can kind of understand like what kind of questions we're gearing for obviously like uh, the analogy i keep giving is like we wouldn't ask an electrician on how to build a house like a lot of people have certain roles and responsibilities but that doesn't mean I'm going to go easy and I'm going to call you out on some stuff. So sorry, no, sorry. <laughs> no worries at all. So awesome. Um, so who are you? What do you do? Yeah. I mean, I mean, firstly, when he says you don't interview people very often, I feel like I get interviewed from like you and Fresh on like a yeah. weekly basis just with questions <laughs> like, hey, what's, what's going on here? But no, no. So, hey, I'm Craig. I'm one of the producers on Hell at Loose from Team 70's side. Um, in terms of what I actually do... The easiest analogy for me is always that I manage the team and make sure things move, make sure things actually happen, make sure stuff goes out, and, and communication within our team is, is flowing. And I want to say that I do that quite well, sometimes in a way that bombards people with information. But that, that's generally what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm going to simplify it. Um, but with that being said, my day-to-day -day changes from minute to minute. As you can see with today, when VoIP went down uh, <laughs> with the BizVox issue, I went into almost communication mode with outside parties. It, 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 again, the role of a producer in itself is you just get stuck in where you can and you help and you make things happen. Um, I don't know if that answers the question as easily as best as possible. I'm hoping it does. You're just uh, the guy in the chair, dude. Whenever we uh, have questions or need someone to go to, you're our guy we call. <laughs> I, uh, I yeah. sit there on my lap, spinning it's around like, every so often. And, and every good heist or operation, dude, needs a needs a guy in the chair. Mm hmm. Agreed. The, the net and to the Spider Man. <laughs> I, I was telling chat like right before, like one of the one of the things that you specifically helped us fix was the just train wreck of leaves in <laughs> Mortain. And so we reached out to you. We're like, hey, what the heck is going on? Why is this the way it is? And you helped us kind of solve that. So that was awesome. So, so historically, leaves were much stronger back in the days. <laughs> oh, so is you, that it? Could, yeah, so they could actually deflect tank shells, I'll have you know. But mm. I thought, you know what? For, for gameplay purposes, let's, let's take that back a little bit and uh let's make it so the tank shell no no you're completely right mate so it, again it, it was some it was an honest mistake and honestly something that was missed uh and i again this is why i like having these lines of dialogue with, with yourself and, and fresh and it's, I, I think a lot of your community they, they'll i get messages quite often sure. and i i will try <laughs> uh, and answer everything as much as possible like monday to sunday 20 I, i've had messages at like 2 a.m and i'm like oh i can answer this quickly um but yeah, no, no. Uh, I, I honestly enjoy it from that perspective because Fresh messaged me saying this is an issue and this is why it's an issue. And then as soon as I got into the into work, I said, QA and said, this is an issue. Please confirm it. Let's get something in. This is a huge impact to the place. Let's get mm -hmm. something out as quickly as possible. Yeah, now that map is a million times better. <laughs> that was I can awful. shoot through leaves. <laughs> that was terrible. I just remember like, we did our tank event on that, and that was bad. It was a rough, so, rough first introduction yeah. to it, but it is what it is. It's in the past. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um. So let's kind of just get started. So it's been a year since our last meeting, right? With with the developers of Hell Loose. How do you feel about the accomplishments of the past year? Oh, geez, that is a good question. Um, right, so for the last year, 
a lot of things. I, I, I there, there are a lot of things I'm really proud of, and, and 2024 is actually quite a, a blur for me in terms of content. Like the amount, some of the stuff that we put out, I, I'm quite really happy with the console server browser work. I think that was detriment. It needed to happen. The console community needed that to happen for the game to continue working. So I'm so proud of the team's work on that, and I think that from my perspective and the feedback that I'm getting from the community, they really enjoy it. But this was the first step of, of, of getting that thing in. We need to continue to build on top of that to make it work um, as well as possible. Uh, I do like, again, I really think that the team expression did phenomenal work on Martan, especially with the the visuals. I think the visual fidelity on that, even though you couldn't shoot through the leaves uh, at the start, um, the visual fidelity, I think it is almost a, a little bit of a next step in terms of what we want to do uh, with Hell Let Loose. And I think another big, big point from from my side was the British rework. Uh, it, it feels so long ago, it was at the start of this year, but I, I think that from my personal opinion, the LL main completely 360'd. I think it, it was a map that PDFL didn't like due to its wide open spaces and there wasn't a lot of cover and it, it just felt quite flat. And I think the, the team really took together to almost change that around um, and, and, and make it a, a quite in what I like. I, I like visually a, a good map. It, it's a standout-ish map in my eyes. Um, so I, I really enjoyed the work that they've done there. And I think looking at the to what's next, the, the Elsa Bond Ridge work. So what you're going to see now in the PTE, um, again, we've just launched for patch 15.3 and we're almost wanting to get you on to update 16 as quickly as possible. So looking at Elsa Bond Ridge, the Blizzard tech that we've put into there, which is new. Obviously we've kind of teased it in uh, the Purple Heart Lane with the storm and the rain and everything that comes in there. The sound that was added to that for the thunder, I think when I had it on, uh, at one point, I had to take my headset off and look outside. I'm like, yeah, it's not, it's not a thunderstorm. This is a real, this is in-game like thunderstorm. Um, so I think Elsabon Ridge is, is 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 looking really good, and I, I do want to talk slightly on Free Look um, because Free Look was something that one of my developers, one of my coders, took on himself. We like we knew we wanted to get it done. We wanted to get in the timeline. He, two of them, spent like their own time outside of work really refining that and really getting to that to a spot because i think a few people have stated before like they we we weren't even sure if it was possible with how it was set up without ripping it apart again well, black matter said it, it would never be possible like ever <laughs> i i wouldn't be able, I, I wouldn't know about that but they yeah. <laughs> you're good, you're good. They, they they essentially spent their evenings outside of work unpaid like like not unpaid we've paid them <laughs> but they they spent their time outside of work it's the passion to play out listen like you know yeah. what i i want this in here they so they spent so much time getting that to a state and and i fought the call and i was like this needs to get in this needs to go in the update this is not gonna be everyone's like this is like what are we needed but the, there are certain players that i think are gonna really benefit um for the for the free look mode going in there or the free look functionality going in there i think it was a busy year in, in all honesty uh, from my perspective anyway especially update and hot fixes that were required um and it's going to get a bit it's going to get busier yeah i think the yeah, reaction yeah. for free looks almost like overtaking the excitement for Elsenborn, it feels like, out of nowhere. <laughs> <He's gonna say laughs> that. Yeah. Oh, no. I, well, no, it's, just, it's crazy. I didn't, ex I, I mean, I guess I just didn't expect a, a, the so much positive reaction to that. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm, that's a personal thing, but yeah, it's it's something so slight that kind of just like, you know, we worked in there with all the advertising for Elsenborn, and it's like, oh yeah, free look too, and people were like, whoa, free look, and like, yeah, but the map too, and it, it's just interesting to me that so many people really wanted that <laughs> this whole time, and you really, um, made good on that i i think it just highlights like the the want for new you know mechanics or do new like changes to the game and keeping it kind of fresh but um yeah like i i i'm very surprised that like you guys casually dropped that in one of our play tests and we were just like wait what <laughs> it's I, like i remember the play <laughs> tests as well it was, i think the play test before that is when I told you about the uh, custom map layout. And I was like, oh, by the way, we're about oh, to reset yeah. the map. <laughs> yeah. uh, made it so you can change the, the layout mm -hmm. of the map on the fly. Uh, and then on this one, I was like, I'm going to do the same thing. Just not going to tell anyone about it before we do it. And then just go, hey, 
hold on <laughs> just yeah. look around that was crazy i mean yeah you guys did also do that which was really cool which is another thing i think that could That's never huge. have been done and that kind of goes to server owners where it's like you know you can customize the specific point layout and i, I think like for me ray Morgan, i think is a cool map but I would never play it if the center is not the objective because the center creates some cool moments, right? And I just don't think it, it plays well aside from that. So it's cool now that you can select that manually. It, it, it really frustrated me personally watching, like knowing how comp matches are working, mm -hmm. that they just keep having to reset the map until like <laughs> yep. get the, yeah. the layout. I was like, this is awful. No, we need to get the, the the layout in there so people can just set it and then they can get on with the comp matches really just get started well i suppose that kind of goes into like something you just mentioned so like you mentioned that you're taking some of the components and kind of extracting them from some of the core attributes right like traditionally hell loose was built to go ahead and only play the 50 versus 50 only play you know warfare and offensive but you mentioned like th there's some aspects you're, you're you're pulling apart so like what's the significance of that why does that why should i care about team 17 expression taking some of those components and separating them from the core mechanics yeah that's again another a really good point and it, like you mentioned it's not something that you the or a player would notice when we do updates because it's just oh hell let loose is playing like hell let loose plays but no. So it's actually quite a lot of work. We fundamentally had to rip out a lot of the core mechanics of how Hell Let Loose was made to work. Like you mentioned, Hell Let Loose was made to be played in 50 versus 50. It was made to be played warfare offensive. These capture zones were made to be random. Um, everything was predetermined and hard-coded in almost, which we wanted to change because we needed to change it because that's how the game's in the future is going to grow. Um, so, like I said, it was really rigid before, but by taking it apart, we're taking control away from what was previously set and allowing more functionality going forward. So, ripping out the you need to have X amount of infantry, that you need to have X amount of tanks, or you can only have X amount of tanks, to make that more of a modular system, if that makes sense. So... The thing, the, what I would dream the end goal to be is that we can give as much control back to the server owners and the players as possible so you can do all of this. And the first part of it was that custom layout tool um, where we had to rip out the, how the game works to make it do something it was never designed to do, which is you go in, you set the map layout, you choose what you want. At the moment, fre uh, Fresh, Raz, before you mentioned that you would like to have this saved to the server. Obviously, I'm going to take that feedback back. Um, but he's, he's giving that kind of power back to you and allow for a lot more modularity and allow us to conceptualize and actually make content a little bit quicker when it comes to coming up with cool ideas, coming up with cool ideas for new game modes, coming up with anything. Like we, we took it apart so we can make things a little bit more quicker. And like you said, allow for that, um, which I'm hoping, again, sorry for my British accent and Yorkshire accent. Uh, it doesn't always, it can sometimes come back, come out pretty quickly, but I'm hoping that answers that question of the importance of us ripping it apart and putting it back together. Yeah, I think the possibilities are kind of just endless once you break it down to so many different levels. You know, for example, Craig, you and I have talked about this before, but we're doing the tank event after this, and it's like you'll see all the hoops we got to jump through just to make it work. And going back to Raz's point, or Ramagan about the middle points, the only one that really works for the general public, it's it opens up so many doors and opportunities for replayability in the game and, and custom events, custom servers, stuff like that. So I think that's a great way to do it. Yeah, I think like you were saying, like I've said to you before, on offensive previously, you couldn't have the layouts that you can have now with the custom layout tool. You could not have a row, uh, you couldn't have points in a row. It just wouldn't work. It wouldn't function. Uh, oh, sorry, you couldn't have it zigzag, but now you can. If you wanted to in offensive mode and you wanted a zigzag pattern for your uh, capture points, it's now possible because we ripped that entire how it was meant to be made and made it modular so we could do that. Yeah, that's awesome. Because I, I 
I really think that like putting more power in the server owners and and uh, as I was posting some you know promotional about this uh, and socials, like that was a common theme that continued to go up is like like updates to to server owners like how can we get more power how can we you know get updates to like archon things of that nature like it, it i i really hope that the developers and 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 yourself like really see that there's benefit in giving more power and more freedom to mechanics like my future state would just be or my vision i suppose like the capability of just removing arty for example or just yeah. For us having our armor only event, removing all infantry and only, you know, armor or uh, like all. I mean, I guess like portal mode is from Battlefield would be like my, you know, goal. But I don't think you know Hellus is built that way originally. But that sort of like capacity capabilities of having some sort of custom aspects and then, um, you know, being able to to really like make it your own. I think that would be the best, like, end goal. Yeah, and I think, like, how much of that can be done with the custom Archon tool and the Archon tool mm -hmm. uh, as it stands and trying to feed as much into that. But no, yeah, you, you're completely right. It, it would be cool. And obviously, I'm not a designer. I'm not a developer. Yeah. There's not <laughs> as much, like, they have been thinking about this kind of stuff for a while and, and what mm -hmm. would be really awesome um, for you guys to have um, for that, and I said, the first point of that was the cu this custom layout tool, which is kind of proven that something that possibly feasibly couldn't be done can now be done. Um, so we're trying to open that floodgate slowly, <laughs> at least. So I do have a question for you, because we're kind of talking about, you know, giving the players abilities to kind of change the game, but there is still something that Team 17 and Expression needs to add. And uh, the practice range is great and all, but what about a tutorial? <laughs> I know anyone that plays this game is, uh, the, whether new or old, knows how frustrating it is for new players and, and both different sides. So is there anything behind the scenes you could tell us or anything at all about the future of a tutorial in this game? Yeah, so again, you can hear me with these questions. I'm not 100% <laughs> <I know>. on, <laughs> but, uh, we we we. With Hell Let Loose, as it, sell, as it stands, it's, it's a really complex game. Uh, people don't understand. Some people don't understand how complex it is. They think it's a first-person shooter, but the game behind the game is really complex. Uh, and it's, it is, like you mentioned, it's so hard for some new players to, to understand from their perspective. Um, it, it's just, it, it, can, it can be really daunting. And I think from my side, from what I see, the meta game that was originally designed in Hell Let Loose, that we've evolved past that now. So what the game was intended to be originally it is no longer that. I think the players themselves have created their own meta, which that aspect is what I think is the most important to, to teach players is, no, not how do I want the game to be played, but how is the game actually played? How are players playing it? And I think that personally, how I uh, learned when I first when i originally came onto the game quite a while ago as i was watching a lot of tutorials from like soul sniper yourself everyone to kind of learn how learn how the game not the game how it was made but how people were actually playing it so i think um showing the showing new players that is going to help them onboard a lot quicker but no i agree the uh, a long-term benefit would be having a full tutorial system uh Without obviously sharing too much in length, it's, it's something that is going to be needed to help not just get new players in, but retain them because they're going to understand the game a lot easier, a lot quicker. Absolutely. I think hearts break whenever someone that's played this game for years joins on like a free weekend and it's, it's a bunch <laughs> of low die. levels. It's, the game's just chaos and it's just not fun for anybody. So I'm glad to know you guys are working behind the scenes on that. The next one here I have uh, is the LODs, man. Like, the LODs have been something <laughs> that has been terrible traditionally like for Hell Loose. for me at this point, dude. I, yeah, like, I think one Did of the... LODs are going to twitch. Yeah, one of the worst maps for LODs, in my opinion, is uh, uh, Stalingrad, man. And I know on console, it, it runs terribly as well. And I think it's because of the LODs and all the assets. Um, I... I, I personally have had an issue with LODs for forever. If you don't know, uh, by the way, LODs 
are just how the it, an asset changes in distance, right? That's why you get like the pop in, pop out, or the two dimensional. So, like, what progress have you guys made on on lods, and like, what are you continuing to look at when you do lods? Yeah, so the lods again. I'll, I'll with your with your viewers there. So lods is a level of detail it is like like Raz it, uh, rightly said is how items change the further away the closer you get to them uh, this is in all aspects is a slider uh, within the engine you change at what distance a an item will change its mesh to make sure the game runs as well as possible if everything was running at a maximum lod it would effectively mean that everything's super high res and with the size of hell let loose that would not run you would need some nasa grade space machine to actually make that run so what we what needs to happen is things need to level the the detail needs to change the further and quicker uh, the further away you get from it um now I d you might be able to answer this here to be fair but i mean with uh, maps like mortan and elsenborn ridge you should be noticing this issue a lot less so you shouldn't actually be noticing um Things popping in and out at random distance, at least not big objects like hedges, trees, uh, things that people can hide behind. That you shouldn't really be noticing on Martan and Elsinore Ridge because there is an issue, a fix that we have put in, or we have been testing on these maps specifically, um, which is essentially without going into too much technical around it, is is pausing no, okay. the, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in the detail, it, yeah. The detail for me is the problem is this. I'm not a designer, I'm not a developer, but this is like how I know it functionally works is we pause the level of detail when you're doing things like uh, zooming in, zooming out, etc. So it's not changing uh, at that point. Um, now, the downside to this, and especially with older maps that we didn't work on, or it wasn't, it wasn't being built by Expression Games, is the fact of we need to understand what kind of performance hit. This is, this is going to do to those maps. Um, so, I mean, I mean, the first point is, I suppose for both of you, is do you notice a lot of less loading issues on maps like Martan, Elsinore? I'd, I'd agree uh, with that. I'd, I'd agree it's it's much better than maps like Purple Heart Lane and Stalingrad and, and uh, you know, even SMDM to an extent. But yeah, it is it is better, I would say that. Yeah. There's less no noticeable issues. I haven't played Elsinore, obviously, enough. And I personally haven't played Mortane enough, but I have noticed that the pop in pop out for sure is not as significant in Mortane as it is in other maps. And I think that kind of goes into like the stuttering and stuff I get in other maps. Like Stalingrad still like is, yeah. is terrible at stuttering where I don't, I don't, I feel like I, I was running around quite a bit in Elsenborn and, and Mortane I've ran around quite a bit in, and I don't see that much stuttering in those. No. So there's always a, a type of stutter that you're going, that you have, you will get, which you'll notice is somewhat of a potential like minor freeze. Uh, mm -hmm. And that is the world rebasing. So how Unreal Engine works uh, is the world will rebase after a certain distance because the size of the maps are so big. You'll notice that it's not actually time that you'll get those lags. So it's not, oh, every 30 seconds I get these lags, these little lag spikes. It's the distance that you'll go uh, because that world is rebasing. And it's, 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 setting its center again um motan elsenborn ridge as mentioned you, you shouldn't be seeing that kind of issue because again like i mentioned we've been working on improving that um now to actually push that out wide we need to make sure that the qa team and everyone can make sure um can load into it and make sure that in terms of performance, we're not negatively impacting those maps. I know that Stalingrad, for example, needs work, uh, and it's not something work. that's escaped there, yeah, not something <laughs> that escaped our gaze at all. Um, but Purple Hard Lane as well. I, I haven't played personally the new Purple Hard Lane, but that one traditionally terrible with lods too. Oh yeah, it was one of the worst. Yeah, I, I haven't played the rework since the PCs. I, like, I haven't either. Yeah. yeah, but is that I'd another one you're looking at too? It, part of the refresh was getting a lot of that stuff cleaned up as well. Uh, it wasn't just adding the assets; it was it was cleaning that up and optimizations as well. Mm -hmm. So I would like like if you did Martin, if, if you do have something, obviously let the team know, and we we can see in about fixing it. Um, but no, we it, it's one of those things is it's not just putting the fix in there, but making sure that fix doesn't break something. It doesn't push it over the memory usage, especially being on a game that's across multiple platforms. You need to make sure that performance isn't just is 
fine on PC, but it's also fine on console, and it's also fine on all these other platforms. It's making sure that we can ship this out uh, to every platform and, and we don't impact the performance on it. Um, but I mean, like in short, as, as mentioned, Asmon Ridge, Mortan, you shouldn't be noticing those issues as much because there is something that the team have been working on to resolve it. Um, and we will continue to work on these improvements to make sure we can get everything up to the same standard. Yeah, because, uh, again, like I don't want to harp on it too much, but the LODs, I think, just... Uh, this is more specific, I would say, to probably commanders, maybe squad leaders, and especially, like, tank commanders. Okay, so, yeah, you know, yeah. So. Like the the lods are just atrocious. So I'm glad you guys are working on it, but Craig, get, get it get it fixed for <laughs> us, man. Hashtag save PHL. Yeah, save, uh, Stalingrad. <laughs> like I yeah I, I get I suppose like for for maps that you're refreshing again I, I I full disclosure I have not played even the PTE for for Purple Heart Lane because I just mm. don't I didn't care too much about Purple Heart Lane. But um, like those are just atrocious maps with LODs. So like I, I don't think those should be released in any capacity if those LODs are not fixed. Uh, so we just need to make sure like that when they come out, like <laughs> they're functioning. You know. Yeah, I, I think that lodding is always going to be a thing. Things are going to need to render out and render in at certain right. distances. Otherwise, you know, it's it's just fundamentally not going to work. But you shouldn't be seeing things popping in at a close distance, especially big objects. Yeah. Um, now, if people say, oh, that grass has lotted out at 500 meters away, it's like, yes, it's small objects. They, they're going <laughs> to need to lot They're going to need to lot out. But yeah, just hang out in that whole building, then you got problems. Yeah, That's exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, that makes I sense. I do want to make sure we have enough time to talk about also Gordon Ridge with that hitting this weekend. So we got one more question here for you about this kind of stuff. Um, can you touch on Archon at all? Are there any upcoming yeah. optimizations? I mean, I guess the kind of do dove into customization and stuff like that, but is there anything else for Archon and server owners for console and PC that's coming out or that you guys are working on? I don't want to get in trouble. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so without going into like giving too much away, uh, the Archon, Archon is a huge part of what makes Hell at Loose such a great game. Um, not Archon in general, but the, just the Archon, but custom Archon tools, the work that a lot of that team are doing is phenomenal. I, I, I think when Archon was originally made, it, they didn't know how expandable it could be, and I, that's thanks to the custom Archon creators. Um, this isn't something that's being ignored in any way. Like, I'll tell you that for, for sure now. Um, but what I can say is that we... I don't... What I can say <laughs> is that we have someone on the team that is currently working on Archon and when we have something to share, I'd love to get it in front of the custom Archon team as soon as possible. Uh, I don't want as much as I don't want to put something out there without them seeing it because they're the ones that are putting in so much work to to make it a better experience for everyone. I want to us to have a tool that can go to them. And they be bought into it they'd be really happy about it and they go you know what this is this is our dream this is what we wanted it to do um we, we're currently using I, I don't know if you're aware of it there's an archon wish list um that the team have been been working on the custom archon team was working on and we're using that as almost a guide for improvements and changes that are uh, important because they they even organized it in the level of importance of what they they want to be seen first so <laughs> we're taking that into high account um however Currently, um, we need to work on what, what the limitations are in the current version of Archon, and it's almost that point of we can now see what some of these limitations are, and we need to, like we have done with the client, the base game itself, is try and break down those limitations um, to make it a more modular system. Now... As of even as of, as soon as today, and I think that the community manager will, will will know is I've been speaking to them about Archon and the custom Archon tools to to kind of start getting the ball rolling of let's get these conversations going. Let's uh, kind of see what we can talk about. Oh, I'm I'm trying to not be cryptic, um, <laughs> but it, it's it's yes. We, I am fully aware of how important Archon is to the game, as I, I'm hopefully disclosed like before this, and Archon is not something that is getting forgotten about. And I think it, 
looking to next year, I think it's something that we, we as I said, I have someone who's, who's working on it. And I think we are going to see some good improvements. I want to see some really good improvements. Good deal. I guess, I, yeah, I mean, if we're talking about being cryptic here, because I know Raz's chats are probably going insane asking questions about <laughs> yeah, like, tree armor and metas and stuff, because we haven't talked about that in 30 minutes. Uh, I mean, that's, we, we Craig and us spoke before this, and to be completely transparent, you know, there's going to be stuff that we're going to talk about in the future. This won't be the last Razcast that we have Craig on, that we have people from Expression on and, and Team 17 on to talk about that stuff in particular. But there's not enough information on those topics to us really worth it to dive in there right now and and, and spoil anything. I mean, Craig, I don't know if you want to touch on that at all, because <laughs> I'm sure I, people are asking for it. <laughs> I think the content going forward for Hell at Lose, I'm going to say that I was busy this year. I'm going to be even more busy next year in terms of getting stuff out um and look i mean honestly i'm i'm just i'm really grateful uh, uh, for the patience that i've seen from the players uh as we've just been generally prioritizing plans uh, and getting everything kind of in line um what i do want to say is hell let loose from my perspective and team 17's perspective we currently have no plans to stop supporting it so there is going to be content uh what that content is will obviously I'll, I'll have to get the developers around you don't want to hear this from a producer because the producer is yeah you, i won't be able to give you the good the information in such an an eloquent way um because my job is boring i just i i i, I work with the the team and i i enjoy it because this is this was my dream job as a child and i've made it happen uh but I, I, my job is just working with people and assisting them to make sure that we can deliver. Um, so I think getting the right people in this room is important. And I think gotcha. something to kind of like reassure everyone with, and, and Fresh had already mentioned this, we've talked to Craig and we've talked to people with Team 17 and Expression. And unlike before, and, and Craig, feel free to jump in, like I think the communication plan is really looking to change as well. Like this is not going to be the last one, is what we're told, Craig. Mm -hmm. I'll hold you to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but uh, like we've been reassured to make sure that all those questions that you do have, like Chris said, like the armor, the infantry, the meta changes, are going to be addressed just at a different time and hopefully fairly soon as well. Yeah, I, I what I want is to give. Uh, what I think we would like is to give everyone the best information possible. I want it to go out with boom like a big bang and i'm doing so many hand gestures i know you can't even see me but it's not dumb. <laughs> <laughs> i want it to be a huge bang and i think everyone wants this to go down really well i want to almost under promise and over deliver uh is, is what i want to do but yeah i i want to be able to i think we want to be able to give you the best news possible and i'm hoping that we can very soon Cool. So Pacific confirmed again, right? All this stuff. <laughs> already out. Yeah, it. already out. Already gone. Tank. Yeah. Unique tank Orders armor. In. We got it. You heard uh, it first. I know. <laughs> uh, so jumping into Eldenborn Ridge, right? Eldenborn Ridge is going to be the new map. Uh, we are going to do our tank event here right after the interview as well, uh, focusing on this map. But why Elden? El Am I saying it right? Eldenborn Ridge, right? Eldenborn Ridge, yeah. Elzebon. Yeah, why yeah, is yeah, it yeah. El? Yeah, why? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I, I have it as EBR, and so I forgot. Yeah, Eldenborn Ridge. Why Eldenborn Ridge? Eldenborn. Yeah, that's what I'm getting for. Elden Ring. <laughs> Elden Ring. Elden Ring yes. Ridge. I yes. love that. that Elden Ring Ridge. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no. So it's one of those. It's a biome that the team hadn't worked on. Like expression, they hadn't worked on it. The team saying we hadn't worked on a snow biome, and we looked at what. For a car card how to offer. I was like, do we improve that? How do we take that and push it again to another level? We've done the forest, we've done more tan, so we've done the greenery. Let's do snow. And looking at the battle itself, I think the team not only looked at anything that happened around there, but the topography of the map and what would make a really interesting Hell at Loose map and what would stand out as a as a as a really cool map. Um so I think from my perspective. The, the biggest reason was is we haven't done it. Let's try it. Let's see what if we can, we can take a snow map and evolve it ten times over. Let's see if we can make it a really good snow map and make it the best snow map. Um, Ooh, I like that. Yeah, fighting words to the boy fans. 
Yeah, I mean, like, uh, I, I will say just just on my quick play test of it and just floating around it, like, it is a very unique map as compared to Foy and 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 uh, Karkov. I feel like Foy very flat for the most part, very long sight lines, very sparse trees. Karkov mm -hmm. more buildings and kind of towns, a lot of topography. But this one kind of meshes the two where it does have some towns, a lot of topography, a ridge, obviously, but more of like a like a ravine kind of down the middle, and then a ton of trees, which which is quite different. So I I was saying it almost looks like a little bit of uh like Hursk, Herkin maybe, and and Karkov like all put together. Yeah, no, I I completely agree uh, with that statement. I think it's. It's a lot of them meshed it together. I think Fresh, we've talked before when you asked me what my favorite tank map was, and I was like, oh, doesn't know about Arsene von Ridge yet, uh, but Kharkov was, was, was my favorite tanking map of all time, and I was like, but you know what, going forward, I'm hoping, really hoping, that you so much. House of von Ridge becomes a, a really good tanker map. Um, but again, not just tanking map, infantry, it, it's got so much maneuverability around there from a lot of cool like foxholes that people can jump in, mount MGs. Um, yeah, I think... Do you get stuck a lot they're... on like the roads and the, the no. paths and stuff? That was a question some people asked. No. Uh, oh. If you do, let you shouldn't, you please <laughs> let me know. Like, like you're doing this tank event. Yeah. If you get stuck on something, let, let me know. And yeah, I'm hoping you don't. What we, about we, the 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 uh, what was it the, the floating chair we saw? What, what's going on with it? Uh, so <laughs> I guess we gotta keep it in now. Keep historically, in. That, <laughs> that 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 chair was always there. Right? Oh, when we looked at okay. referencing, that building had that chair floating. Um, <laughs> right. So I mean, don't Google it. Right. How does don't that do happen though? Like like the asset just never got changed or something, or the building shifted. Like I don't know how those things happen. I don't know if so, you'd know, so, but. Uh, so things like that are usually made like like blueprints, and they'll make a, a map. They will make an object, and then they will make a blueprint of that object to put across the map. Oh, um, I see. Okay. So something will have some something will have just been misplaced. No one would have done that intentionally. It will genuinely just been misplaced somewhere um, when moving it. They could have been moving an object, and then that chair just slightly moves out. <laughs> Someone um, says petrified. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it could be. So. <laughs> I think it's a snapshot of a time in that that world, mm. and someone was actually inside of that building and threw the chair out of the window, and we took a snapshot just gotcha. as it was mid air. More yeah, accurate, that, like fully, what, <laughs> fully accurate. That's the law of that map, and I will, I will stand by that. That's an Easter egg. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I've got wait, Easter eggs. Not, hey, souls or ghosts? Let's just call it Soul Sniper's Easter egg, and he threw the chair out the window. <laughs> Yeah, that's Soul Sniper's Easter egg. In. There you go. He was so angry. We just need to put an S on it, and there you go. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> um, I, I guess going on this topic, um, what are some unique things about Ellison Born Ridge that, I mean, I guess it could be cosmetics or how it plays or kind of the technical things. What are some unique things about that map compared to other Hell at Loose maps that sets it apart? I think everything. I, I, oh God, everything sounds so uh, so bad. But I think a lot of the thing the work that has gone into Elsinore Ridge. So the map itself, you'll notice with a lot of the capture points is nothing feels should feel empty. Everything, nothing should feel the same. So you should go in there and you should be able to tell when looking at that capture point, the story behind it, and and what it makes it stand out. And it should not look as the same as when you go to another capture point. It should look, feel completely different. So if you're basically able if you're in a match with someone and you want to be able to describe where you are you should be able to go fiery trees and it's like, oh, it's at hinterberg <laughs> uh, uh but it, it, it's telling a story in those level in that level itself and, and kind of describing the battle that actually took place and being as sympathetic to the time as possible i think that's something really cool and unique about elson born um you do see it in some maps but i don't think to this level of detail that the team of almost put a little pocket biome around each of these capture points and tried to tell a story um, about it. And I think when Greg did his vi did the video and was doing the voiceover, we, we were trying to convey the fact of we've taken these capture points piece by piece and really, like I said, just built them and put quite a bit of care into that, um, that factor of it. And I think the team at Expression have done a phenomenal job 
um, getting that um, the way it is. Um, I also think, I mean, I, sorry, am I, I don't want to go over your time frame. No, no, no. We, we have yeah, 20 yeah. minutes left. We're yeah, still yeah. good. I, I think a lot of the work when it comes to the finer details, such as the, like, the snow camo on the vehicles. So it's not like, it's not like a, another map where it's like, oh, this is just that tank that was in that map just popped there. It's like, no, this is a tank that was here in that battle. It's got snow covered in it. That's how it's going to look. Um, the detail in that as well, it's almost like that extra step to storytelling the world um and another thing that i mean sorry lastly for me on this point is is the weather system so mm. again a lot of a lot of how hell at loose is is, is you are playing a first person shooter you're playing a, an almost like a mill sim uh like a light mill sim experience but with elsenborn ridge itself with the weather in there it's actually telling you how these battles were for uh, it was fought in the cold. It was freezing. The bl the weather was uncontrollable. It was you couldn't you couldn't bet on what was going to happen. And I think with that weather system in there, it it's really going to make it a like a different experience. Hopefully, each time you play it, and just an experience that you can continue playing for a, quite a bit of time and feel like no game is the same. I guess two part question. Just kind of breaking about what you, what you mentioned. So uh, you're putting extra care into kind of the theming of, of these maps that as you come out, right? And you're transitioning some of the vehicles into those patterns. And then you also mentioned like the weather is dynamic for, you know, for the map. Are we going to see that kind of mechanic, like the weather mechanic potentially being applied to other maps, the, the snow camo or like a camo themed uh, applied to other maps. We see that obviously in uh, Drill. We see that in uh, LL Main, which both I think well, one more than another <laughs> look look great. But I think this is like iconic. So I would love to see that in other maps as well. No, I, I think going forward, I, I can as much care as possible is going to go into. It. I don't want to delve into too much information because I don't want to. Yeah. Someone to, to think, but I mean, yeah, I, I, the weather system. It, there's no reason why it couldn't. If it is appropriate to go in, and there's no reason why he couldn't go in there, but I think at the moment it's going into Elsenborn Ridge to, because it is the new thing. It is here's this new fit map, and here's this new feature for that map. It is plausible that that feature can then pull over to like Kharkov, Foy, etc. Similar with the rain mechanic that was added to Purple Heart Lane. There's not a reason why it couldn't. I don't say I can't go into it in too much but yeah it's, it's nothing's out of the question at this point i would say i guess to follow up on that you know obviously you're talking about the tank camos and that kind of stuff the new u.s winter outfits look really really good in my opinion mm -hmm. i think you guys did a really good job with the british we work on ll main with it's like you know the very specific uniforms and factions or anything Please. like that <laughs> yeah yeah knees we need to cover up the knees now on elsenborn are you guys thinking about doing anything like that where it's a faction that's kind of you know stricter to the winter outfits and whatnot at the moment there's there's, there's nothing kind of set in stone on that i think the, the work that was done for the the rework of winter like i say it's not just a white uniform it's not just a base uniform painted white now yeah. um it is this is the the law accurate law accurate like it didn't really happen no this is the accurate <laughs> uniform that was actually worn during that time and is authentic and i think it's a next step up and i think again what expression do on their side is they're really trying to continue to push those boundaries for the visuals and the realism because realism is a huge part and i think there's a lot of people that play hell let loose from my perspective that are mostly interested in in the authenticity behind it and i think driving that is is really important yeah i'd agree uh well, i guess since we're kind of coming to a close here you know i want to make sure we have time if there's anything you want to touch about about the future of hell at loose you know if you want to just go ahead and tell us what the whole roadmap is for next year that'd be cool <laughs> yeah too. roadmap when oh yeah one second uh, let yeah, me just pack just up my go, bag yeah, and leave uh, <laughs> whatever you want to do but you know i just want to make sure we have a few minutes here to, so security is coming down talk I'm about right, whatever so you want to talk about here give you a platform fyi so i i don't know if anyone here is from england but it's 6 45 p.m so i'm the last person in the office right now we appreciate um, it. <laughs> i didn't know yeah i was like looking i was like, it's like pitch black um but no, in terms of like 2025 and going forward, I, I mean, what I want to say is, look, I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful 
I'm honestly like ecstatic about the players um, and the patience that they've, they've like as mentioned for the patience that they, they've kind of gone um, with, with a lot of the work that's been happening. I know it's not it's things that with the things that people have really enjoyed and things that people haven't enjoyed as much. Um, and we're really taking that into consideration. I think going forward, look, we're actively recruiting for, for more resource here to, to kind of make sure that hell at loose is a, is a huge priority. It's a huge priority for the, for everyone here. Um, and it's really important to us that the community are happy and it's always going to be important that the community is happy. So I think going forward is how can we nurture and how can we make what you want happen? Um, 2025, as said, I think I mentioned this potentially starts. I, I was very, very busy this year um, because I've done, we've done quite a lot of updates. And I know that the team have been extremely busy and extremely hard at work getting a lot of stuff done, even though similar to like you were saying, like you wouldn't notice the fact that the team were kind of ripping apart a lot of the core mechanics and putting them back in so we can make them more modular. But they were really busy this year. They're going to be really, really, really busy next year. Um, yeah. I think that's probably the best thing that I can say about security coming in, batoning me out of the building. <laughs> I, Beck is lurking out there somewhere. <laughs> how um, you're you're mentioning right? Like, how can uh, you all are are taking the feedback from the players and and you know implementing it? I know from my perspective, you're taking the feedback by us doing the p like our you know work corresponding yeah. play tests and PTEs and things, but like how can the average player give feedback and make sure they're heard? Like what's the proper channels? What are you guys doing? Like, are you looking at social media, things like that? Yeah, we are looking at social media. We're looking at everything. I think the most constructive way that people can send feedback is, is via the, the team sending support page and putting, sending in tickets. I know that I have a, it's a quick team uh, that will, will look at that and send me that over. And, there's a lot of people that I said they, they were messaging in these communities, and we have people to check that constantly as well to make sure that uh, we're doing what people are asking. Um, but I think sending things through the customer support tickets, playing in these PTEs, and sending the feedback via the feedback form uh, as well, it means that we can see really quickly what is and isn't working. Um, all that is, is really important, and just communicating constructively and kind of being as clear as possible. Um, and if you do see a bug or if something happens, try and communicate that as easy as possible for me. Like I, I always, so my, my background years and years and years ago uh, was QA uh, and I use the Dear analogy. Of, yeah, <laughs> I, I use the, uh, <laughs> the, the analogy of when you're trying to describe an issue to someone, describe it like you are speaking to someone that has no idea what game you are playing and no idea how to even turn on a computer so you have to take them through it step by step and go look if you for example if i go into this map and i do this action three times and i do this this will break the game i'm like oh cool you've run it through i can easily now reproduce this issue um but saying game broke yeah it doesn't give anyone kind of anything to, to base base it off of i think it's being as clear and constructive as possible um and as nice as possible, but that's mostly to me. I think like your community, Raz and Fresh, are as nice to me as possible. Uh, no one's ever shouted at me yet. Um, you, you'll get the answer heard a lot quicker. And I think being like like you did, like you and Raz have done in the past, Fresh, you messaged me an issue. You told me what the hat issue is. We've reproduced it outside. We've got it fixed. Clips go a long way. <laughs> yeah, it, it honestly does. If you can send a video of how to reproduce an issue very easily. My QA team can look at it and they can uh, you can reproduce and get the bug in and then I can do my due diligence of prioritizing that out and making sure we can get it in there somewhere. Um, it's such a huge game. I, the Hell at Loose is such a huge game. There's a lot of maps. There's a lot of... The maps are huge. Things may slip through. We don't mm -hmm. want them to. Things may happen. And it's... Chairs. Yeah, chairs. chairs. <laughs> hashtag chairs. It, can we get hashtag chairs <laughs> trending on the <laughs> Discord? And, but no, it's it's really important that you communicate it to the team like as, as efficiently and nicely as possible, and it goes a long way. Like it really does. And as I said, from from your communities, when they've told me something, that I've been able to find it really quickly and get it resolved as quickly as possible. Yeah, I think just from a gamer perspective, it's super annoying that we're paying what it was forty dollars. Now it's like fifty dollars for the game. 
and for new players right maybe they don't have a great experience a, a great um like a great running game even on console i know they mentioned tons of stutters tons of issues so it'd be great that we're paying money for a game that functions and i think that's like like all the work that you've done is great but i think there needs to be a better channel of communication of that right like communicating what have you guys been doing like it seems like you know just night maps the whole time like skirmish no one cares about that i mean at least i don't but but like what is it that you're doing that's a big achievement? And to me, like something that I didn't know about uh, until I, I, I talked to you was one of the biggest things that you guys have been doing is taking a lot of the functions and untethering it from each other. Because to me, the the future of Hella Loose is not necessarily all the new content, like the bug fixing. I mean, all that's great. But I think to me, it's like Gary's mod, right? It's like being able to customize your experience and putting that in the player's hands is the future of hell at loose mm-hmm. full stop content bug fixes. Great. Awesome. But that is like a huge piece as well that I don't think is, is looked over very often. Yeah, no, I, I'd agree. I said uh, with a lot of, with every update we do, there's always content. I know, um, obviously night, night skirmish people don't always want that stuff. This is, isn't content that I, that I think the team well, that the team are working on exclusively. This is potentially content that's just there, and it's something that we can get out alongside a, a bigger update for you guys, obviously. But no, we, we've heard that, and I know that the team are, are really taking it on board. Um, but yeah, no, I, like I said, I, I, I completely agree. I think making sure that we can untether a lot of that system and make things quicker to get out to you and test quicker with you guys is, is really important and i think the reason why people have stuck around for so long is because they love hell at loose i mean i i was here back when we, we first got this game uh, i instantly fell in love with it and as soon as i got the opportunity to go you're on now full time it was like <laughs> from hands together thanks thanks a lot mm-hmm. um I think, yeah, I said the teammate expression are doing some phenomenal work. And if I could put in the change logs, every little bit of detail like that, uh, I would. But it's not something that you're going to see from the player's perspective in all times. It's something that's happening in the background to, in the future, make the game better. Um, And I I do really appreciate the fact that you, you understand that from that perspective. It's just... Yeah, things take time. Thing, thing, things do always take a little bit of time. And I'm hoping that... I, I've seen so much on the Reddit at the minute um, with with 15.3 and, and Alison Von Rich people like, you know what, they're doing some work that was, like you said previously, it was never there and you've been asking it for ages because the team are paying attention to, to what's being said at all times, basically. Yeah. I do want to selfishly make a request on the record right now <laughs> for a future PT to try it out. What do I have to do to try night maps with the fog removed? I want it to happen. Fifty dollars PayPal. Right? I want it to happen. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> um, let's chat. Let's have a chat. There's so many. There's time. so many things I want. Like, I mean, the the half track. I want that one. Squad on the record, leader, though. commander only. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a genie. Right? Uh, we know no. you can make it happen. We, you're 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 the insider we have now. <laughs> Um, I'm, not, I'm not the hero that you you need or want. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely the hero that you've got. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. But no, I mean, honestly, thank you so much, and I hope that we can honestly do more of these. Uh, I think maybe like having an hour long uh, little podcast where we focus on some core different attributes each instead of having like one a year or every two years where we try to cram everything in there is a nice change of pace. So I'm really looking forward to maybe like an armor specific podcast with a developer producer, mm-hmm. uh, infantry specific podcast developer team 17. I know you're here. I know you're listening. I'm putting this out there. I'm putting this into the universe. Uh, but yeah, like I think those would be really cool. And I, I mean, like, honestly, thank you so much for taking your time and, and hanging out with us today. No, I, I said, I really enjoy it. And like I said, I'm always going, I'm, well, I'm, hopefully, unless the security guards come down, but I'm always <laughs> going to try and be here uh, to help service this, this phenomenal game, this phenomenal community. Like, I, I really do appreciate the opportunity that I've been given here uh, and the opportunity that, that we have to, to make a really 
well, why is already a great game continue for a long period of time um, yeah awesome. i apologize that you've had to listen to it i hate my voice this is why I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm sorry i'm not going to rewatch this because i hate how i sound um and i don't want people like I'm, i can just imagine the comments now going what's this british person talking about i hate that like, I, yeah. I, I i'm in the same boat i think i maybe watch my content one times after it's done edit done editing to make sure yeah. there's no uh nothing wrong and i never, can never it get again. used to I, it i hate hearing myself speak so welcome <laughs> yeah. to the club exactly yeah. but if you want to watch it at home and you missed it uh you can check it out on fresh baked goods youtube channel it'll be on my youtube channel and you can check out the vod right after the uh the stream today i will say we're doing a tank event we'll also have that on youtube and we're about to stream it in just a moment um here at 2 30 p.m so in about 30 minutes right that's eastern yes eastern yes yeah. so 2 30 p.m eastern um craig are you gonna join us you gonna cast it with us yeah. I'm going to need to drive home, but I'm going to try and jump on. I don't know if you're always going to be in this channel, so I don't know if I could just yeah, jump can be. back in. We'll be here. Yeah, we can be. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. Well, Craig, appreciate you joining in. It's an awesome pleasure yes, to have you. you. Fresh, obviously, my co-host. Love you. Appreciate you being here. And uh, we'll be right back after another uh, short break here um, of uh, Words on Stream. Thanks. Thanks.